Have you ever wondered how Inklings deal with rain? It's well known that Inklings and Octolings do not go well with water. They touch it, they dissolve. Why? Well, as stated by Mr. Ogami, this is because the concept behind these creatures is that they evolved to be able to transform, and at one point in the evolutionary process, they lost the ability to live in water. The Octolings evolved the same way that the Inklings did, like their skin is a little too thin for the water now, that's why they can transform. But just like the Inklings, they can't swim in water anymore. That would seem to be the common consensus for their relation with water, but it seems that there's more of a limit to how much Inklings and Octolings can take. This is because Inklings and Octolings can stand in water for a bit and be just fine, but once they're fully in water, they don't instantly get splatted, but instead they struggle to keep afloat and eventually go splat. That is the fact that Inklings and Octolings need to hydrate with liquids, presumably ones that have water in them, which apparently is also lethal to them according to Marina's dialogue from Starfish Main Stage. Then there's the question everyone has asked whether Inklings take showers or not, since Marie talks about wanting to take a cold shower after dealing with the sweaty humid weather in Kelp Dome. The relationship between Inklings, Octolings, and water is a big talking point for the lore since these creatures, according to everything that's known about them, just don't go well with water anymore. And I know this has been talked about many times with there being many different theories to why water is deadly to Inklings, but we're not going to go too deep into that because, like I said, it's been talked about by other people. We kind of just need a uh, common basic understanding that Inklings, Octolings, and water don't go well. So what I want to talk about is how dangerous is water that falls from the sky and how do Inklings and Octolings deal with it? Well, for starters, I think you can imagine this scenario would go a little something like this. <laughs> Seems like that would be the obvious outcome for a situation like rain for them, right? But what if instead it went a little something like this? What if Inklings just had no problem with rain? Because there's obviously a big difference between being neck deep in water and having it fall on you. So perhaps little amounts of rainfall have no effect on Inklings. But would that be the same for a downpour? But before we get more into this, we have to consider whether the city of Inkopolis even gets any kind of rainfall. And from the looks of it, it never seems to be anything else other than bright sunny skies with a few clouds here and there. But considering that it is based off of a mix of Tokyo and Shibuya in Japan, we can assume that the city of Inkopolis is located in what used to be these two cities. Unless due to the flooding and receding water of the Earth, who knows how an overall world map of the current Earth would look like? But just to make things simpler, we'll go with Japan's weather overall near these cities. Now, thanks to Inkopolis Plaza and Square being near to each other, it's safe to assume that they get the same kind of weather. As for other stages, some seem to be near the city of Inkopolis due to them having the same surrounding area filled with buildings and sometimes a body of water in the distance. But when it comes to the dry desert-like splatlands, I'm not really sure where that would be located. It could be in the same continent as Inkopolis, and the splatlands could be the aftermath of the flooding, just as the Sahara used to be an ocean ages ago. There is a sunken scroll in Splatoon 3 depicting the Eiffel Tower in the flooded desert while it's raining, but figuring that out is for another time. But for now, we'll just stay in the city of Inkopolis and its surrounding areas for our weather conditions. So as for the weather, Japan gets precipitation throughout the whole year with their average annual rainfall ranging from 1,016mm to 2,540mm. And according to the Japan Meteorological Agency, since 1951, the average rainy season ranges from June 7th until July 19th. Comparing that to the rainiest state of the US, Hawaii, they get a statewide annual average of 1,618 millimeters of rain. So from all of this, it's quite obvious Inkopolis would get some rain, and more importantly, different kinds of rainfall from light drizzles and heavy downpours if we really compare it to Japan. And there kinda is a panel in the manga with bobble drenched from the sudden rain. So I guess this could've kinda confirmed that rainfall does happen in Inkopolis, especially sudden heavy rainfall. But then again, is this even canon? Who knows, but once again, it does make for a great reference. But now with that out of the way, we can get back into how Inklings deal with rain. The way I see it when it comes to rain falling on top of an Inkling without any kind of umbrella for protection, it's clearly much more different than jumping into water. But to bring up the manga panel again with Bobble, she walks in drenched and says she's taking shelter from the rain. And I can see taking shelter two different ways. Either she's taking shelter because no one wants to deal with sudden rain unprepared, or she's looking for the nearest building as fast as possible to avoid the downpour from splatting her. 
can't really tell how much of a tense situation this could be since Bobbles' expression is always a big ol' smile, but like I said, how reliable is the manga? Who really knows? But disregarding the manga, when raindrops fall on an inkling, do they soak up into their inky skin? Or does it just kind of bounce off? Sadly, there is no rain in Splatoon, but luckily the one thing we can compare it to is the ink storm. When this special is used, the ink rain animation looks to be really slow, but the drops of ink seem to be long ink strands instead of ink drops, so this could be somewhat similar to perhaps your average rainfall. And if an inkling or octoling stand underneath the full blast of the ink storm, they end up getting splatted. You want to avoid getting splatted? That's easy. Seek cover, or get away from the storm. So how similar is an enemy's ink storm to rainfall? The only kind of measure we have to see the limit of an inkling's body to take an opposing ink is in the training area, in which a dummy can handle up to a maximum of 100 damage until they pop. And when you activate the ink storm, it does 0.4 damage per frame or around 20 damage per second if you're caught under it and don't move. As for a measurement for how much water inklings can take, it seems it's just waist deep, which could be around 30% of their body mass. Also a reminder that this is all really just a guesstimation? I'm awful at math, so we're just kind of winging it with the power of overthinking here. But if it is similar to the ink storm, when rain falls on an inkling, it could accumulate or mix with them until it's too much and break some kind of ink skin layer, leading them to pop. But I feel like that would only happen depending on how hard it's raining. Having present day Japan rainfall in Inkopolis shows that they get different amounts of frequent rain throughout the year ranging from drizzles to heavy downpours, so it seems it kinda depends on how the day will be. So similar to the large city of Tokyo, if all of a sudden it starts to drizzle in Inkopolis, maybe it isn't too much of a danger to go out and continue with their daily lives. But if all of a sudden it starts to downpour, what kind of action do they have to take to avoid getting splatted? And if it starts to rain in the middle of a turf war, how does it even affect the match? If it starts to drizzle, perhaps the Inklings aren't too concerned for their well-being so they continue their turf war. But then, what would happen to the ink that's already on the stage? Ink is known to disappear on its own thanks to microbes in the air, so if rain falls onto an active turf war, does it mix with it and make a giant mess? I don't know about you, but dropping a wad of ink into water is pretty neato, but dropping consistent water on ink would definitely make a big mess. But changing the scenario to a downpour instead of a light drizzle, assuming rain works similar to an ink storm, how much danger would an inkling be in? Would a full-on downpour be similar to a bunch of ink storms in the sky bringing down a hailstorm of pain? I mean, clearly a way this can be dealt with is umbrella, or looking for cover as quick as possible. Inklings and octolings in the plaza could just run into the buildings for shelter until it passes, but what would happen to inklings in areas that are more open and prone to flooding? There doesn't seem to be many sewer grates and stages to prevent flooding because inklings would probably fall in them accidentally. So an inkling in the middle of a flooded Black Belly skate park may as well be screwed until the rain ends. Unless they're rescued by Jellyfish Rain Rescue Team, saving all Inklings and Octolings in any kind of water danger. You know, there's probably a weather forecast available for Inklings to watch, but they're a little too simple brain to pay attention to it. They kind of only look at the current stage rotations, it seems. Unless they do like to be informed for the upcoming weather, and depending on what kind of rainfall they'll get, they change into gear more suitable for the weather conditions, considering there is a lot of jackets and sweaters in the game. I mean, they can't all be for style, right? Clearly all kinds of gear have different kinds of abilities, so maybe the more layered an inkling's clothes are, the more protection they have from the rain? Hats also probably provide the biggest amount of protection, considering an inkling's head is pretty big, so that's probably where all the rain gets taken in. I'm sure an umbrella would easily be the best protection an inkling could get during the rain, but I don't think they'd be running around a stage playing turf war, wielding a weapon in one hand and an umbrella in the other. If anything, hopefully we get more into the topic of weather in Splatoon 3, considering what causes this world is global warming and great conflict, so maybe we'll get to see how the Earth looks like now. And since Alterna seems to be an area filled with some kind of snow, maybe ash, nuclear debris, maybe we'll get to see another weather condition, maybe more prominent rain in the story mode. And also originally I wanted to talk about the weather overall in Inkopolis, but in the end I guess I decided to focus more on how they dealt with rain, because it does seem like it would be dangerous to them, and I've always wondered how big of a deal it would be for Ink society. I always find it funny how jellyfish aren't affected by water and are probably the working force to help Inklings deal with water problems. I guess these different sea creatures really did do a switcheroo in their evolution process when you think about it. Oh yeah, and also when comparing the Inkstrom to Rainfall, I also had the question pop up on why does a different color or foreign ink splat Inklings? 
I feel like there's an answer to that in the story mode, but I kind of just don't know where to find it. So if you do know where that's talked about, and if you made it this far into the video, please let me know. I also wonder when Inklings were taught about their weakness to water. Maybe with their new evolved forms, it's now ingrained into their brain that water is a no-no. But will we really ever know? Probably not. But what do you think? How do Inklings deal with rain? Are they even affected by rain at all, or is it a dangerous weather condition they should be on the lookout for? You should very much tell me in the comments below, and hey, subscribe if you like this content, and why not hit that bell to get notified? But that's all I have for now, so I guess I'll see you gamers later. Goodbye.